Hello, welcome to Anselm Griffin's Occasional Series in MATLAB Tutorials. Apologies in advance if today is rather brief and the explanation is on the short side. So I just assume a number of things, perhaps incorrectly, but I assume you know how to convert two second order differential equations into one first order differential equation. And I also assume that you have the notes available uh, to show the um, mass spring damp shop that we're looking at. So I'm just running the code, that's all. I'm sure you have the notes available to you. So very briefly, um, again apologies, there's not much comments on this, I just want to get it done. So line one there is we just clear the screen, close the workspace and close all figures. There's our two initial conditions, the initial condition for uh, the position is 1 and for the velocity is 0 and here we're calling out E45 we're calling the function um, with a time span of 0 to 20 using the initial conditions so let's just have a little look here there we have the function spring uh, down here on line uh, 10 is the uh, forcing function and line 8 are the values for C and W and then on line in effect the line that's highlighted there is the first first order differential equation that'll be the the velocity part and the velocity part the initial uh, bit there is equal to P2 so that would be the initial uh, position for the velocity and then here uh, which you, the notes are given in the equation uh, or sorry the equation is given in the notes apologies and then remember we're looking at sine theta or theta because remember as theta gets very small we can drop the sine bit and we just have theta so the first value of theta there is p1 so we return two uh, things in p dot so here so we get time and we get p now remember p is two columns so on this one that says plot time on the x all the rows column one so the first column will be the solution to the velocity the solution to the velocity is the displacement so i have it done already so figure one is the result of line four so where the mouse is now line four gives us that so all the rows first column gives me the position remember you've numerically approximated or you've integrated the velocity when you integrate the velocity you get the displacement or the position there we put in a title we do a save as we save the figure and on line nine we're plotting t on the x p all the rows column two and all the rows column two is the solution to the acceleration and the solution to the acceleration is the velocity so there we have the velocity over time we save the figure we put some on uh, labels x label and y label apologies if that was too brief but just i was just said i'd uh, do it very briefly thanks very much thanks very much for listening